In this video, I'm gonna show you how to capture cinematic and nature B-roll with your iPhone. And I'll be using the iPhone 13 Pro Max. We're gonna shoot everything handheld, so no gear needed. We will be just using our phone. And if you stick till the end, I will show you how I edit a cinematic nature B-roll sequence on my iPhone using InShot. What's up everyone, Bennett Grazer here with SmartphoneFilmmaking.com, the epic online course where I teach you how to shoot professional looking videos with your smartphone. And today we're at the Greifensee and we're gonna capture some beautiful nature scenery and I'm gonna show you exactly how I captured those smooth handheld shots so that you can do it for yourself. And right now it's super hot, I'm sweating, but I still have to do this video, so let's not waste any time and get started. So before we start, let me first show you the camera settings I will be using. So let's open up the native camera app and I will be shooting everything in 4K 60 frames per second. 4K has more detail and it allows me to reframe the shot and 60 frames per second um, allows me to slow down the footage to create a more dramatic effect. And also the shots will be much smoother when shooting handheld. So the first shot we're gonna create is a revealing shot. I will use this dead branch over here and sort of reveal the location so that the audience knows where the scene takes place. And for that, I will be using the ultra wide angle lens and I will be holding the camera this way because it provides more stability and have this three point contact. And I will be creating an upward movement uh, to reveal the location. And before I do that, I'm actually gonna tap hold on the screen to lock the autofocus and auto exposure. This way, no changes occur. And this is really important if you want to make your videos look uh, professional. So with that said, let's create our revealing shot. I'm gonna move down and I'm gonna place the camera behind the branch. And once I'm ready, I'm gonna press the record button and then move up. Okay. And I always like to do a safety shot, so I'm gonna do the shot again so that I can pick the best one later in the edit. And go. and I'm gonna stop the recording and make sure to play back the footage to see if you're happy with it, otherwise retake the shot. So now that we have our reveal shot, I'm now gonna capture some medium and close-up shots. You wanna make sure to uh, record with different focal lengths to make your video look more interesting. And I see a couple of people there uh, stand up paddling and I want to capture that in my video. So I'll be using the telephoto lens to get closer and I will create a slide shot behind those leaves. And I'm actually gonna set focus first on the subject. I'm gonna lock it. And once I'm ready, I'm gonna hit the record button. And action. All right, I'm gonna do another one and go. So I now want to create a little bit more movement into my shot. And for that, I will be using the ultra wide angle lens. This way the movement will be more apparent. And what I'm gonna do is actually slide along this branch, which creates a really dynamic shot. And while I do that, I'm gonna also sort of create a twist. And let's see how that will look. So I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna set focus and exposure, lock it, and then start recording and then slide backwards. Okay, let's try that one more and go. So I just discovered some baby ducks and I'm gonna capture them using and I'm gonna capture them using the telephoto lens. This way I can get close enough and also I won't be scaring them off. I'm also gonna create more of a low shot. I wanna get on eye level with them. And then I'm gonna create a slide shot in the same direction like in the previous shot. So from left to right. Start recording. And I'm also gonna lock the focus and exposure and then
gonna create a safety shot. So as you can see, using the telephoto lens can be really useful when shooting animals from far. This way you won't scare them off. And I use it quite a lot. And if you don't have a telephoto lens, you might consider getting the one from Sandmark, which is great too. I will leave a link in the description below. Now for my next shot, I'm gonna film that boat over there. You want to have subjects in your video that are moving. So I'm a bit too far away. So I'm actually gonna use the telephoto lens. Let's see if that works out, yeah. And I'm gonna frame it so that the boat meets the intersection point. And I'm gonna lock the focus and exposure and then start recording and create a little slide shot. All right. And I'm gonna do it the other way. Okay, that looks really nice. And something else I forgot to mention is make sure to enable grid lines. This way you can compose your shots more easily. This way you can see if your horizon is leveled because you don't want to be shooting this way. Otherwise you have to fix that in post and crop in. So I'm now gonna film this grass and I'm gonna use the ultra wide angle lens to create a bit more movement in my shot. And I'm gonna do a push out shot. So let's do that. I'm gonna frame it and then I'm going to lock the exposure and focus. I'm going to start recording and go. All right, create a safety shot and go. Awesome. So this is going to be the second last shot I'm going to capture that house over there because we're gonna add some foreground using these leaves and we have the house as our uh, as the mid ground and the mountains as the background and this helps create a three-dimensional uh, video so i'm gonna lock focus and exposure on the house and once i'm ready i'm gonna do a slide shot and start recording and go Looks really nice with the mountains. We can do a second shot. So as for the last shot, I'm actually gonna film myself how I'm sitting over there and gazing towards the lake. I think this is gonna work great as an ending shot. I'm gonna place it on the ground and I have to be a little bit creative. I'm just gonna place it a little bit closer, just like that. And I think this is gonna work just great. I'm just gonna leave it how it is. I won't lock the focus and exposure. And because I have the Apple Watch, I can actually use it to frame myself. The great part about having the Apple Watch is that I can also record from a distance. So let me just adjust the composition. All right, I think that looks great. I'm gonna now position myself. All right, I think this is gonna look great. I'm gonna sit over here and I'm gonna start recording and go. And that my friends is our final shot. Let's now head back home and edit the footage together. So I'm now back at home and we're now gonna edit the clip on my iPhone. And the great part about using a mobile editing app is that you can basically edit from anywhere. That's why I'm here outside at my balcony, enjoying the nice weather. And that is really one of the advantages when editing on a mobile app is that you don't have to be dependent on a location. So with that said, we're gonna edit the clips using InShot. If you're not familiar with InShot, it's a free video editing app available for iOS and Android users. And it comes with all the basic tools you need to create a simple edit. I personally have the full version since I use it quite often. And I use it mostly to create quick engaging videos for my social media. So if you're a beginner, I think InShot is a great way to get started with video editing. So with that said, let's open up InShot 
and I'm first gonna play back the finished video with the project timeline so that you guys can see how it would look like. So I'm gonna open the finished video project and I'm now gonna play it back for you. All right, that is basically what we are gonna edit today. So we're gonna start with a new project. So select video and then new, and then I'm gonna import the clips that I shot starting from here, and then hit the check mark. All right, so the clips are already in order, but if you want to rearrange your clips, you can just tap hold on the bottom left and this way you can just drag the clips wherever you like to. So the first thing we're gonna do is trim out the bad parts. We're gonna do a rough cut and we're gonna start with the first clip. And as you can see, I can skim through it. And um, I think we're gonna start from here. We can select it and then select split and then delete this part. And then I'm gonna Select split and then trim the right part. Then we're gonna move on to the next clip. I think this shot right here looks good. I'm gonna split it again, delete this part, skim over and split it again and delete this part. And I'm gonna do this for each clip. I think we're, I'm gonna choose this part over here. I'm gonna split it, delete this part and then Split it again and delete this part. As you can see, we have to rotate this clip. So I'm gonna head over to rotate. Now that is fixed. So starting from here, I'm gonna split it, delete this part. And then just as my finger come into the frame, I'm gonna trim it by dragging the handle to the left. Let's move on to the next clip. So this part looks great. I'm gonna split it, delete this part, and I'm gonna split again and delete it. So just as I start moving back, I'm gonna split and delete this part. And let me see. Okay, and just as I stop, I delete or drag the handle to the left. Let's move on. I think this part over here. Yeah, I like this part. Split it, delete it. Split it, delete this part. And for the last clip, we're gonna do the same. I think I'm gonna choose this part over here where I just turn my head and gaze to the lake, split it, delete it. So now that we created our rough cut, uh, before we move on to the next step, make sure to select uh, the 16 by nine format. So if by default your aspect ratio is set to nine by 16, make sure to select 16 by nine. So now that we have that, we're now gonna slow down each clip. Unfortunately, we can't slow down one clip and apply it to all the other clips. We have to do it for each clip. And because we shot it in 60 frames per second, we can slow it down to around 50%. So I'm gonna select the first clip and then I'm gonna head over to speed and I'm gonna slow it down to around 50. And we're gonna do the same thing for all the other clips. So now that we slowed down each clip, let's now import the music. And I get all my music from Artlist. If you guys are interested, you can get two months additionally for free by using the link in the description below. So I already airdropped it into InShot and I'm gonna add it by selecting music and then select music again and then import it. 
and that is the sound we're going to import. Okay. And I actually created a shorter version of it because the original song is around, I think, three minutes long. So right now I'm going to select the short version, select use, and it now added it on top of the clip. So I hit the check mark and now I can start editing to the music. So I'm going to play it back. So as you can hear, there's a rise at the beginning and I'm going to create a speed ramp at the beginning so that it fits with the song. So I'm going to select the first clip, then head over to speed and then I'm going to select curve. And as you can see, everything has been slowed down to around 50%. So I want it to start slow and then speed up fast and then slow back down again. And to do that, I'm going to drag this part over here to around two, two and a half. And then this part up here to around eight. And I want it to look as smooth as possible. So I'm going to play it back. Okay, this has to happen quicker. So I'm going to drag this part over here and this part over here. Let's play it back. All right, that looks great. So let's hit the check mark and move on. Put it right here, moving on. I'm gonna actually make this longer. I'm gonna make this longer too. I'm gonna shorten this part. Turn this part again. And I'm going to shorten it right as the music stops. So now that we have that, I'm now going to add a blank at the end of the clip so that it cuts into black. And I'm going to select it and then I'm going to head over to Canva and then I'm going to choose background. I'm going to set it to black and I'm going to shorten it so that it finishes with the music. Let's play back. All right, it looks great. So now that we edited to the music, I'm now going to check each shot and reframe them to create a more pleasing look. So the first clip actually looks good. We're going to leave it how it is. This part looks good too. We can actually level the horizon on this one. And to do that, I'm going to head over to crop. So I'm first going to select the clip, select crop and then screw. And I'm going to make sure the horizon is leveled like this. And then I'm going to hit the check mark. That looks good. This part looks good too. Oh, you can see my finger up there. So I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit on this one. I'm going to select the clip, head over to Canva, and then I'm going to select the zoom and just crop in a little bit like that. Hit the check mark. Let's move on. This one looks good. This one looks good too. This one as well. I'm going to level the horizon on this one as well. I'm going to select crop, head over to screw, and then I'm going to rotate it like that. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a title at the beginning of the clip. And to do that, I'm going to select text and then I'm going to call it the Greifense. All right. And the font I chose is Amatix. I think this looks really great. And I'm actually going to create a fade in at the beginning and let's hit the check mark. And I want it to start here and I'm going to position it up here and make it a little bit bigger. All right. And I'm going to select this part until clip end. So it's going to be there until it moves on to the next clip. Let's play it back. All right, looks good. 
And that is how you basically add a title. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is add a zoom in effect at the end. And to do that, I'm gonna select filter and then hit effect. And then over here, I have a zoom, slow zoom in. And I want to shorten the value to create a slow zoom in. I think this looks great. And I want this effect to be applied till the end. So let's see how it looks like. All right, pretty awesome, right? So the next thing we're gonna do is apply a color filter to all of the clips. And to do that, I'm actually gonna first gonna select this part of the video so that I can see how it would look like. I'm gonna select filter, filter, and then over here I have different color presets to choose from. And since I have the full version, I have more options. And I'm gonna select this one over here and then I'm gonna reduce the intensity to around 70. Okay. And if I want to, I can also adjust, um, you know, the contrast, uh, tint, saturation, all of it uh, over here. But I'm gonna leave it how it is. I want to keep it as simple as possible. And once I'm done, I'm gonna select the double check mark and apply it to all of the clips. All right, and as you can see, it has been applied to all clips. Now to make our video look even more cinematic, we're gonna add a letterbox on top of the entire video. And I have letterbox available for free on my website that you can download. So to add the letterbox, select PIP, which is picture in picture. And then I'm gonna select the PNG letterbox file. And as you can see, it's over here. And I now only need to um, adjust the scale so I can increase it and it fits perfectly. And I want the letterbox to be applied on the entire video. So I'm gonna select the arrow key and then I'm gonna select the video end. And this will apply it to the entire video. So let's play it back. All right. Looks pretty awesome, right? Now, once you apply to the letterbox, you might need to adjust the framing again. And I'm gonna show you how you can do that. So for example, um, I might want to drag this a little bit downward so I can select this clip, head over to Canva, and then just drag the clip down a little bit like so. And then hit the check mark. And as you can see, the clip has been dragged down a little bit. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is how you can add sound effects. I'm gonna add a bird sound effect at the beginning of the video. And, and to do that, I'm gonna head over to music, select effects, and then head over to birds. And I'm gonna select the bird number eight, right? Use. And I'm also gonna reduce the volume of it to around two. All right, hit the check mark, and when I play it back. All right, sounds great, right? Adds a little bit more atmosphere. Now that we did that, the only thing we need to do is export our video. Now, if you have the free version, you will see the InShot logo on the bottom right. You can simply click on it and select remove once uh, to get rid of the logo, and you can do that for every project you create. Now I don't have it because I have the paid version. And to export your video, head over to the export icon on the top right. And I'm gonna export it in 30 frames per second for my social media and then hit save. And if you want to, you can upload the video directly from InShot to the social media platform you're using. So that is how you film and edit a cinematic nature B-roll with your iPhone. I hope you found some useful tips 
from this video. Now important is that you go out and practice. I assume most of you have a forest nearby. So make sure to apply those mobile filmmaking techniques uh, for yourself when you go out and shoot. That is the best way to develop your mobile filmmaking skills. So yeah, it has been a long day. Thank you so much guys for watching. Now, if you guys wanna learn more, make sure to head over to smartphonefilmmaking.com which is my online course where I teach everything I know on how to produce cinematic and professional looking videos on your smartphone. And I'm running a sale this week where you can get 30% off using the code SF30OFF. So make sure to not miss out on this opportunity. We'd we'll be happy to see you there. Thank you so much guys for supporting this channel. I wish you all the best, good luck with filming, and I will see you in the next video.